Hi guys! Welcome to this week's edition of Vision Eyes. And the painting I have this week is so complicated, this is the fourth time I've recorded this episode. And for the sake of succinctity, I'm gonna get it right, just for you. All right, on with the show. The artist we're discussing is Charlene Van Hale. The painting is from 2005 and it is called Happy End. It's two meters eight tall and one meter 98 wide. So it's roughly the size of double doors. It is um, portrait and it's quite boxy. It's almost square. Now, oof, this painting is something else. It really is a painting that I would say sight gets in the way of actually enjoying it. So I'm gonna describe it as a three dimensional form. And I think that is really how Charlene von Hale wants this to be read, as a, as a three-dimensional form. It's called Happy End, and I'm not quite sure why, but um, it could be... I mean, a lot of her paintings are about activating the space between the viewer and the painting. So, you know, I'm totally activated. You're hopefully going to be activated after this description, which is probably more bonkers than my Rothko description. We're going to start with a fridge. Imagine the fridge door. It's you're touching it and it is cool to the touch. It's slippery to the touch. There are a few dents and a couple of scratches and maybe a couple of marks. You can just feel with your fingertips. Now your hands are beginning to get cold. And that is the background to this painting, this, this cool, metallic, um, cold surface. And now you're going to feel this form which is, let's begin with an upturned tree root. So you're beginning to feel all of these knots, all of these tendrils of root, and they're plaited together like, like, um, like hair. And some of them are bigger on one side and some of them are slimmer on the other side. But it's, it's warm, but it's more like toffee. So it's the feeling of toffee. You can smell it. You know, it is a really rich, glossy, sinuous um, um, uh, toffee that's knotting around each other the way toffee can be. And, you know, you've got about 20 or 25 of these tendrils going off in different directions and you're feeling them and you can put your hands behind them and you can go underneath it because this knot of tendrils is actually floating above this cool fridge door. So you can see how exciting her work is. You can visualize it because it's cold backgrounds, warm foregrounds, and her painting, this painting, um, Happy End, is very temporal. So what that means is that the further you go into it, you realize that it's it's not something you're feeling or or you move from something you're feeling to to, to something that you're experiencing. So as you go into the knots, you put your hands in, you're discovering it, all of a sudden you feel um, uh, an orange juice waterfall at the back. And it's, um, it's really happy, it's really, oh my gosh, it's really refreshing, it's, it's joyous, one of my favorite words, joyous. Um, and it's there, hiding at the back, and then in front of it, now this is the hardest part. I have described this ten times, and it's so hard to describe. Let's start with a piece of broken china or crockery. It's a really irregular shape. Um, it's hard-edged, but then it's got three-dimensionality. You can feel that it used to be maybe the curver of a bowl, of a bowl or a teacup but then it's got these hard edges. Now, it's not cold like China is. Let's say the China shard has just come out of a dishwasher or something, or, or it's made out of paprika, because that is how strange this shape and form and color is. It's, it's a broken teacup made from paprika. I, that's, that's the best I can do, folks. It's so complicated. Now, Next to those, shockingly, all of a sudden you feel, you feel animal paws. So you feel, I can't tell whether they're foxes paws or, or cat paws. They're, they're small and cute and they'll fit in the palm of your hand. Um, and maybe they're rougher and, and, and 
underneath and and lovely and, and furry on the top. There's these three paws. And then in front of that, you've got what feels like the beginning of um, the underbelly of, of your pet dog or your pet cat or or whatever. But it's, it's a really cute um, uh, flesh or skin with, with, uh, uh, with fur at the edges. Now she hasn't painted um, a dog's belly, but this is the color and feeling of what's going on through these tendrils. All of a sudden these tendrils, become this, you know, you're stroking um, the tummy of a pet. And you have these paws over here, and you have this broken shard of paprika um, china in the, uh, over here. And then you have this section in the middle, and I can only describe it as um, the body of a pigeon. And it's the shape of one where it has a, um, a breast, and it has a back, and it has a long tail. But it's kind of... Um, you know when you hold a bird, it's you can feel its little heart and uh, um, underneath the feathers. It's warm underneath, but it's cooler on top. And that is only how I can describe this strange thing that's buried in these tendrils. Now, in between all these tendrils, maybe supporting them, you have little bits of broken wire coat hanger just kind of poking up. They're not going to hurt you. They're not sharp, but they are... They are, you feel that that cooler metal, this harder metal, um, just here and there kind of use the structure maybe to to edge um, the cat's paw next to um, the waterfall of orange juice. Now back to these tendrils, these toffee tendrils. As you feel them, as you go to the, the edges of, of the painting, they um, sometimes pitter out. They sometimes become much more hairy and, and impossible to hold on to. They just dissipate or they become hollow and feel you can only feel the outside of them. And then all of a sudden they vanish. They they turn into mist. They disappear. Sometimes these tendrils travel around the edges of the canvas and then disappear around the back. Now, and then in some places through this form that you're feeling, there are a couple of other things going on that you can't really identify. You can't figure out what they are, but maybe they're a bit frosty. Maybe this piece is a little bit snowy. Um, maybe this piece um, feels like moss. Um, and then all of a sudden in the corner of the painting, um, ironically, it feels, you can actually feel maybe the corner of um, a glass mirror or something like a bevel there's a there's a beveling happening at the corner of this um, painting but it's it's kind of inconsequential it's just there in the background and typical abstraction it is in that it is it's it's dangerous but it's also it's not it's not going to harm you or anything um, and it's really, really obviously playful. Now then, you're finishing feeling these the, this structure, which has different temporalities to it, if that's a word, this temporal structure. And you take your hands away and you're back onto um, the surface of the background, which is that fridge top. And then all of a sudden you realise that on your fingers, you've got that little bit of toffee, that little bit of... Um, orange juice and you wipe it on the surface of, of this fridge because those dirt marks, those kind of grubby marks are there on this surface in the background, maybe closer to the structure. And then there's a big section of the canvas which is just the clean fridge top because this form is floating in the canvas. And that's the end of the description. This has to be <laughs> the most difficult, I know I said that last time, but this has got to be the most complicated and difficult painting to actually describe um, to everybody. So I hope you enjoyed it. Charlene von Hale, one of my favourite painters. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye.